Uh, my dear friends, you're all very welcome. And uh, because of restrictions, we have to provide the music. Uh, well, okay, we can have some singing. We had that last night. But um, I say that, that uh, Masses this morning, we provide the music that, uh, and on my iPhone. But say a prayer that nothing happens, because I did it at the 9 o'clock Mass last night. And uh, a communion was about to put it on. And my sister decides to ring me. <laughs> they tell me that she'll be down for Christmas. Nice surprise to get when I eventually got back to her, but uh, not a good surprise to get at Holy Communion. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will. Uh, you have your 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 um, uh, I think we may be out of them at the door, but for those who have missalettes, uh, we're. Mass during the day, as we normally have on Christmas, and uh, the entrance antiphon, we say that together. A child is born for us, and a son is given to us. His sceptre of power rests upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Messenger of Great Council. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And lift up... <coughs> Dear friends, uh, like I say, you're all very welcome. Those of you in the church, those of you who are outside, probably in your cars, given the inclement morning that it is, those of you who are joining us online, special word of welcome to those of you who are able to make it home for Christmas. And uh, I don't know, there's only one or two children uh, in the church. But I heard Santa came anyway. And yeah, you put your thumbs up down there, Santa. Yeah, good, good, good. Even the big children can put your thumbs up as well. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we come together today to celebrate the birth of Christ. Uh, the great. I suppose it became a miracle, but also the great gift of God of his Son, the gift of God of himself, so that we can be forever one with him. And uh, also, I welcome you, I welcome the Rush family here this morning, who, indeed those of you who are joining us online, with the first anniversary of uh, Kathleen Rush, she actually died on Christmas Day last year. So, I just remembered I don't have a missile myself, it's just to follow it, so. So we ask God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. <coughs> Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God on the highest, and earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are at the right hand of the Father. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. 
How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news, who heralds peace, brings happiness, proclaims salvation, and tells Zion, your God is king. Listen. Your watchmen raise their voices. They shout for joy together, for they see the Lord face to face as he returns to Zion. Break into shouts of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord is consoling his people, redeeming Jerusalem. The Lord bears his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, bring out your joy. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the sound of music. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, acclaim the King, the Lord. Second reading from the letter to the Hebrews. At various times in the past, and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in our time, the last days, he has spoken to us through his Son, the Son that he has appointed to inherit everything, and through whom he made everything there is. He is the radiant light of God's glory and the perfect copy of his nature sustaining the universe by his powerful command. And now that he has destroyed the defilement of sin, he has gone to take his place in heaven at the right hand of divine majesty. So he is now as far above the angels as the title which he has inherited is higher than their own name. God has never said to any angel, you are my son, Today I have become your father, or I will be a father to him, and he is a son to me. Again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, a hallowed day has dawned upon us. Come, you nations, to worship the Lord, for today a great light has shone down upon the earth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through him all things came to be, not one thing had its being, but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of humanity, a light that shines in the dark, a light that darkness could not overpower. A man came sent by John, sorry, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, 
only a witness to speak for the light. The Word was the true light that enlightens all, and he was coming into the world. He was in the world that had his being through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to all who believe in the name of him who was born, not of human stock, nor urge the flesh, or will of humanity, but of God himself. The word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that is his, as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John appears as his witness. He proclaims, This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he existed before me. Indeed, from his fullness we have, all of us, received, yes, grace in return for grace, since though the law was given through Moses, grace and truth have come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, it is the only Son who is nearest the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, uh, between Masters last night, I was trying to take it easy. I felt rather tired, and uh, I suppose, you know, like yourself, you got caught, you know, you got caught up with the whole bits and pieces uh, of getting ready for Christmas. And um, I must say that it's one of those times I envy all the married men or men who have partners, or because uh, I have to wrap my own presents. <laughs> but anyway, you know, sitting in the couch, just watching, even forget what I was watching on television, but. Of course, what happens on Christmas Eve is that the phone, the texting starts, and people, it, some of them you haven't heard from all year, there'll be a happy Christmas message and so on. Of course, you try and respond immediately. But I got one message, it was a sad one in ways. It was a friend, a classmate, um, a priest that I would know fairly well, um, who would be quite disillusioned with the whole thing. Uh, not all his own fault, because he would have a number of times been let down very badly by his bishop. But anyway, um, he texted me anyway, wishing me a happy Christmas. And I said, now it's a pity we have to celebrate Christmas now in what's effectively an atheistic country. And to tell you the truth, I didn't like the negative tone. And I said, I'm going to reply to that, but I'm going to think about it for a while. So I did, and the reply I, I gave to it, I said, there's another way of looking at it. I said, the magic of Christmas means that for one day or for a few days, we can all be one, that we can all celebrate together, believer or non-believer. Uh, rich and poor, uh, the sacred and the profane, what I mean by the profane, the secular, can be one. Uh, and the Christian and the pagan, because, you know, there's plenty of pagan stuff at Christmas. It's not bad. It's great we have it, like all the greenery and the lights and so on, that all has uh, pagan origins. When I mention even about the, the union, you know, but rich and poor, even before Christmas became to be celebrated as the birth of Christ and the forerunner of the Roman festival of Solus Invictus, that's the unconquered sun or the unconquered light. That sort of week of midwinter 
the rich who all live in the middle of Rome would throw their doors open and the poor could come in any time, day or night, and share in the festivities. So, you know what I mean? There is a spirit about Christmas, no matter what way we look at it, whether it's religious or non-religious, Christian or non-Christian, that pulls us together, that in some way makes us one. I think it's basically, you know, just one in hope and one in faith, you know. And quite honestly, I think that is the gift of Jesus, the gift of the Christ child, uh, that in Jesus, the Son of God, becoming human, taking on flesh and blood, taking on a mind, taking on a human soul. Uh, in doing so, God is announcing that he is one with humanity, uh, that he is one with the whole creation, indeed one with the whole cosmos. Not just simply at that time, but he always has been and always will be one with us. Unfortunately, it's us that does the separating. And in fact, when we think about that, you know, about the separating, and we think about, you know, what the word devil means. The word devil comes, I don't know the exact Latin word, but uh, uh, Diablo is the Spanish, which would be very close to the, um, to, to, to the original Latin. You see there a wine in the shops, Castile de Diablo, the devil's castle. But there is an English word that's very close to that, and that is diabolical. And basically what that means is to divide, is to separate, is to cut off from one another. So there you have it, you know, if one people say you know, what is the opposite of God? The opposite of God is to divide, is to separate, create division, create enmity, uh, to create disconnection. So, uh, just simply finish on this point. There is a Church of England bishop, Bishop Tom Wright, he I don't know how he has time to be a bishop because he's written about 70 books mainly on theology. Maybe a bishop might be a handy number after all. But um, I read one of his books and I forget the title of it, but there's one piece I always remember in it. And he said that you know, a lot of Christians believe that uh, Jesus is offering us uh, a relationship with God. And he said, Jesus is offering us much more. What Jesus, what is an offer with Jesus Christ is complete union with God. And the good news of Christmas is that that union is already given. That union is there in the Christ child and God becoming flesh and blood. The Word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us. That is God united with us forever. Please stand. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, that the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Lord Jesus Christ, God, the Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation came down from heaven. 
and when the Holy Spirit was incarnate, the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and rose, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. As we rejoice with the good news of the Saviour's birth, we bring our prayers to the Father who has worked wonders for us. On this Christmas morning, we rejoice with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds at the birth of our Saviour. We pray that our celebration of Christ's birth will enlighten our hearts and minds and fill us with love for our neighbour, particularly those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Pope Francis that under his guidance we can see a rebirth in our church and that the Holy Spirit will lead our bishops, clergy and laity in the way of love, truth, justice and the care of the poor. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all family members who through COVID restrictions, emigration, illness or other personal reasons are separated from loved ones this Christmas that God's comforting and strengthening love will sustain them. As the world continues to suffer from this pandemic, we pray for a peaceful and safe Christmas and a better year in 2022. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, for those who are not looking forward to Christmas this year. Heal those who feel sad, lonely, sick or anxious today. We ask you to give gifts of faith to those in doubt, courage to those in fear, and hope to those in despair. May they too experience the same happiness and peace that the angels give to the shepherds. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. At this time of joy and celebration, we think of those in our community who have lost loved ones in the last year. We also remember today, Lord, all our loved ones who have died and whose absence is felt intensely at Christmas. We ask you to keep them in your presence where they can praise you today with the angels and share in your eternal love and joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in remembering our faithful departed, we also remember those who have died recently remember Conor Maguire in London, the brother of Peter and Paul and John, Ethan Duffy of Lisbourne and formerly of Banna, uh, Father John Cairns of CC in Garrison, and you probably would have seen some headlines about his death, he would be known as the motorbike man, Roisin Del Pinto, Ederney and Belik, Anna Devene of uh, Daisy Baird, uh, both of them of Aaron Drive, in fact, next door to each other in Aaron Drive. So, may these all are departed. And of course, today, as we remember Kathleen Rush on our first anniversary, may these all sleep in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. And in silence, we remember our own personal needs. Lord, hear us. God of love and Prince of Peace, hear our prayers and inspire us to be joyful messengers of the good news of salvation through all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the midst of the world made flesh, new lights of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save the war, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Kathleen Rush, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and our patron, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So now at our Saviour's invitation and challenged by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, and thou be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And as this is the season of peace, and we can't make a physical sign of peace, we just pause for a moment and we pray for peace. Peace within ourselves, in our families, our neighbourhoods and communities, our country, peace in the world. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Dear friends, just in case some of you may be unfamiliar of our practice here, first of all, for those of you outside the church, uh, there will be Eucharistic ministers at the front door and the door on the right side of the church. Uh, and then over here in the church, uh, those of you in the centre aisles, could you please come up first uh, and come up the middle aisle and go down the side aisles. Now, there might be one or two seats where that might be possible, just to just put the pillars, you know. Um, use your own judgment there. Uh, now, um, the Eucharistic ministers may be finished uh, before they get up to me, so if the Eucharistic minister comes in at the door, you can go to that Eucharistic minister. Uh, you'll understand. Okay. Just do your best to keep um, a safe distance uh, from each other as you're going as you're coming to Holy Communion.
Uh, my dear friends, as the right of full communion has been completed, I pray to you, um, probably a lot of you's very favourite Christmas card is definitely probably my favourite, and this is one of my uh, favourite versions of it. Um, it's O Holy Night, and this version is sung by Michael Crawford. And those of you who are wondering who Michael Crawford is, well, Michael Crawford play, played Frank Spencer. But he was also a renowned singer, was in a number of um, West End musicals, uh, most famously Phantom of the Opera. But as I say, this is, is one of my uh, favourite versions of the carol.
We pray. <clears throat> Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Saviour of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so may he be the giver of immortality who lives and reigns forever and ever. Uh, my dear friends, uh, before we end Mass, just as a few announcements. First of all, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, for Sunday after Christmas, is the Feast of the Holy Family. Normally, the day after Christmas is, I don't know, it depends on what side of the bother you're on, you know. It's since Stephen's Day, south of the bother, Boxing Day here, but um, it's overruled anyway by the Feast of the Holy Family. Now, there will be only one Mass in the parish tomorrow morning. I've cancelled the half nine Mass in Munchie because uh, there have been quite a number of cases of, uh, of, of uh, COVID. So, um, and it, it seems to be on the spread again in the, in the, in the community. In fact, uh, it has to be given the, nationally what the, the numbers are. Uh, so, there will be 11 o'clock Mass here uh, tomorrow as normal, 11 o'clock Sunday Mass. Now, there will be no Mass then uh, for uh, the rest of the week, except, well, there's a wedding, uh, Emma McCusker uh, getting married on, uh, on Thursday. And then there will be Mass on, Christmas, on New Year's Eve at half seven. And I will have a special Mass on, on New Year's Day at 11 o'clock. Uh, New Year's Day is the feast of the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God, but it also is... World Day of Peace as well. So that will be 11 o'clock on New Year's Day. And then, of course, we'll be back to the regular Sunday Masses after that. Now then, uh, just as regards coming back to today, uh, could I ask you when Mass ends? Uh, first of all, before I do so, I would like to say thanks to yourselves and to all the people of the parish and all the people who have been coming to Mass throughout the year here for uh, following um, the, 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 the guidelines and what's expected of us and, uh, you know, taking the necessary precautions. So far, thank God, we haven't had a single case of COVID linked to a church gathering. And that is largely down to the fact that people are following the guidelines. I'm hearing reports in other parishes that that isn't the case, but by and, by and large, practically all the people here in Kulmania have, and our visitors as well, have been following uh, those uh, guidelines. Um, so, with that, uh, just at the end of Mass, could you make sure that you don't leave anything behind you and take home your uh, bulletin and your missalette as well? Uh, and, and also, uh, could you vacate the church fairly promptly after Mass because the church has to be sanitised? I know it's one of the things we miss, you know, at the end of Mass, the children coming up for the treats and visits the crib and so on. And of course, there's a great banter and a great chat. And it's one of those days that's no problem with that in the church. But unfortunately, it's different times. So... Uh, could you, you know, vacate the, the church in a safe way, but do it uh, promptly after Mass so that Eileen can get the church uh, sanitised. Also, I'd like to thank, uh, there's a lot of people, I can't thank everybody by name, but first of all, I have to say the church has been wonderfully decorated this year. Uh, it's a fantastic finish to it, so... I'd like to thank everybody who put, first of all, put the arrangements in place, parish together, liturgy group, our COVID committee, and our main, and chiefly our, our altar society, who have excelled themselves. And indeed, uh, of course, in the background and uh, playing no mean part in all that, has been our new sarcastan, Eileen Montague, and. Uh, who is, is already making a big impact. So uh, thank you, Eileen. I thank Rob Frey for, and his granddaughter, Tia, for setting up the crib. And uh, in regards then the liturgy, 
Uh, well, last night we did have some live music with Paul and Jeanette and, and Ryan Mongan. Uh, but also to thank uh, our ushers and stewards and collectors and our readers and our Eucharistic uh, ministers. And also just one other group as well, just as regards the outside of the church with the star and all that, to thank Village and Bloom for that. But also to thank him as well for the crib down in the centre of the village. Because last year, with there being effectively closed down, we decided that since people really couldn't come here freely, then we take the crib and we take the Christmas story to them. And that's why it's down there in front of the town hall. In fact, there's a beautiful photograph. It was all in relation to Santa coming up on, on um, Facebook last night. But thanks to all. And I wish all of you a happy, a peaceful, and a safe Christmas. The Lord be with you. By the way, one thing about just taking home the missalettes, if there's any children or grandchildren around like that, there's a few activities for them on the back of the, 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 the missalettes. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world by his glorious birth, has illumined this holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illuminate your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who will that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favour and make you shares with the Church in heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain at you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And uh, we'll finish with uh, Joy to the World.